Chandra, in 1999, you had a near-death experience. How did it come about and what circumstances triggered this experience? My life started to be scarred by disease from the time I was born. Because my mother was ill at the time, suffering from severe asthma, and when I was 14 years old, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I was witness to everything in terms of her chemotherapy and how sick she thereby was feeling. And then she had a mastectomy and the cancer was gone for a while, but two years later it returned in the other breast. And no one spoke with me about this at the time. At some point, when my mother was already very ill, so that she often was hospitalized, also in various university hospitals, I had a dream at the end of 1998. I dreamed that she was going to die. And because we had a very close relationship, whereas the relationship with my father was very difficult and my two siblings were respectively five and eight years older than me, it all was so clear to me that I said to myself, if my mother is going to die, then I don't want to stay here anymore either. And so on January 25th, 1999, I decided to commit suicide. So I lay down in the middle of a cold country road. It was early in the morning. It was winter, so it was cold. And I let a car run over me because I thought that if I left, I could give my life for hers. So I really thought that in doing so, seeing from this point of view, I could give my life for hers. And when this car ran over me, I was in so much pain that I didn't even know what I actually had done there. And I wanted to stand up, but I couldn't because my left leg was twisted in an unnatural way. And I don't know either how long it took for someone to come, nor how long it took for the ambulance to come. The only thing I still remember is that I woke up for a short moment in the ambulance, and then I passed out again. After that, I also woke up for a moment in the hospital. Then I saw my father, who was leaning against the wall talking to the doctor, and he was crying. And then everything around me went black again whereupon I went through a tunnel, through a black tunnel, until from far away I saw a white light. And there was so much warmth emanating from this light, so much love. And I moved on, suddenly seeing several angels. And these were angels with white robes, and just like you imagine angels, with long hair. And there was so much love in that room, so much warmth. And I was so infinitely relieved and so happy that I was allowed to be in that place now and that it wasn't about pain, it wasn't about suffering anymore either, and that I was free, actually. And the angels were speaking to me saying, Kendra, it will be a long time before you will be allowed to stay here. So I was pleading and whining and all that. And I finally said, but now I'm here and it's so beautiful here and I want to stay here and please let my mother live, and then I'll stay here instead of her. I thought that I could give my life for hers, so that she would be allowed to live on. Because it was clear to me that if my mother died, I would die with her. But the angels said, no, that's not possible, because you still have a task. And then they sent me back. You have to imagine that I was standing next to the angels and that I was looking at my body in the middle of this operating room while the doctors were operating. My left leg was completely broken. Everything one can break on the lower left side of my body was broken. And then when looking at me, at my body over there, I decided that I didn't want to go back into that body. I didn't want to go back anymore. But the angels sent me back. And at some point I woke up, not knowing how long I had been asleep, but that was almost 48 hours later. Afterwards, did you inform the people affected that what you did was a suicide attempt? No, and that's exactly my lifelong lie that I have been carrying around with me for almost 20 years. I simply couldn't bring myself to tell my family, my father, the truth. I was so ashamed 
that I had attempted suicide. And I couldn't admit it because I was so afraid of being cast out of my family, of no longer being loved, of, well, of no longer belonging to the people around me. So I made this suicide attempt look like an accident. So I lied to everyone. I lied to my family. I lied to the police. I lied to the doctors. Actually, my whole life only consisted of this huge lie because I didn't dare to tell the truth. And I didn't until 2018. What was the triggering moment that made you reveal the true background of your accident? In June 2018, I was taking a shower when I made a disconcerting discovery. There was something big and hard on the right side under my armpit. And this was a ping pong ball sized node. And I thought, this can't be true. This simply can't be. I'm healthy. I'm very healthy. And yet I was so scared and I cried and immediately went to the gynecologist the next day where I had an ultrasound scan done. Then he sent me for a mammography. And that's when the result was clear that I had breast cancer indeed. And when I then knew that, and also knew that it was a malignant and fast growing tumor, I had no idea about how serious the situation was and how much I was on the precipice in terms of health. And through a customer of mine at the time, and by making it public and talking publicly about the fact that I had breast cancer, simply to get help, Cornelia contacted me a few days later with the words, maybe I can help you. Are you open to new things? Then I wrote to her and asked her, well, what do you mean exactly? And yes, I am open to new things. And she then replied, well, it's about something spiritual. And I have to say that I didn't know anything about it at all before, neither about any spiritual things, nor about any other esoteric things. I never had anything to do with it. But I knew immediately from her words that she might be able to help me, that she is the person who could help me. Thereupon, we had a phone call where she asked me what happened to me in the previous years because she wanted to do a soul earthing with me. And I didn't understand at all what a soul earthing is. And she then explained to me what it means, namely that injured parts of the soul go out of the body because they are so hurt that they don't come back and that you can only get them back through a soul earthing. And that this is the reason why she wanted to apply this method. And at that moment, I knew I would now come out with the truth. And when I told her that, I told someone for the first time in my life that my accident had been a suicide attempt. She was the first person that I told this to. And so I spoke the truth. I didn't even tell my husband, nor did I tell my family. Did this soul earthing you spoke of have an effect on your physical health? Or was it primarily an impact on your mental well-being? On everything, definitely. So today I can say 100% that if I hadn't worked with Cornelia and hadn't grounded my soul, I wouldn't be here anymore. She was the person who led me to this spiritual path in addition to the medical path, but especially the spiritual path. And I can't even say what that did for me, what this soul earthing did to me and how I felt afterwards. But bit by bit, the more I was on this spiritual path, the more I found my way home. Because all the years before I had been living in a soap bubble, I wasn't one with myself at all. I wasn't really present. I wasn't grounded at all, nothing. And she brought this awareness closer to me, working with me day after day. And I have viewed so many tutorials and read the books of Donald Walsh, thereby it became more and more clear to me what this world is all about and why we are here and why I am still here. And I was also told that I still have a task to fulfill. And as time went by, 
I became more and more aware of this task because every chemotherapy I underwent meant one more step towards healing for me. And through this spiritual path, above all, when I was shown how to work with my spiritual team, because for every human being there is a spiritual team with which we can work, and its members are always there for us and are happy to help us. And that's the way I can work with the Divine Source and feel this trust, as well as this incredible love and also feel the love for myself. It was unbelievable. I was such a shy deer before and hid myself, and I always tried to adapt and be perfect, to do everything right and to please everyone, my husband, my family, my father, and yet there was still my big lifelong lie. And I was so terribly afraid of being discovered, so I never dared to tell the truth before until 2018, when I first told Cornelia the truth, and then a few months later, my husband. Thereafter, last year, my family and then I went public in order to reveal my lifelong lie. And to really say that it is so important to speak out this truth, I was also terribly scared to talk about this near-death experience, because then I was afraid that I would be admitted to a madhouse, because then everyone would think that I was completely insane now, because now she's fantasizing something about angels, and that she has seen them, and that she still has a task. And I was so terrified, and also ashamed of it, that I didn't dare say anything about this at all. After all these spiritual experiences, are you now convinced of life after death? Absolutely. I'm not afraid of death either. And the best feeling about it is that I have just lost this fear as well, because I knew from the beginning that I will take a relevant path and also that I would be healed and that I also would contribute a lot toward healing myself in order to heal on the spiritual path and my soul above all. And I also have to say that at the end of December 1999, I saw my mother again in a dream. She was there and she said to me, Kendra, I know how difficult this year was for you, this year 1999, but I will give you a guarding angel and I will send him to you. And then in 2000, my husband came into my life and I know that my mother sent him. And meanwhile, we have been together for 22 years now, this year, and I am so infinitely happy. And I can say, in any case, there is life after death and you do not have to be afraid at all because fear eats up the soul. And when we are no longer afraid and when we have trust, trust in God, then everything is so much easier. Thank you, Kendra, so very much for the interview. Thank you. Thank you.